In the game of football, Mike Labinjo knows that one man can change the course of a game. Back-to-back -back sacks for Mike Labinjo. The 28-year-old also knows how much one man can change the course of a life. I couldn't picture myself 15 years ago saying, you know, I was going to go to the Super Bowl, um, you know, I was going to get a scholarship. I've been very fortunate in my life, and a big part of that is, is Frank. I mean, I'm not really sure where I'd be with, without him. You know. Frank Giffen is a Canadian working as a manager with Scotia Capital in London, England. He works on the trading floor, and when there's a free moment to chat, one subject prevails over the rest. We talk about Mike almost as much as we talk about the markets when it's football season. I never knew what the Grey Cup was. <laughs> I do now. 20 years ago in Toronto, Frank became a volunteer with the Big Brothers program, an organization that provides mentors to children in need of a role model. Frank's little brother was eight-year-old Mike Labinjo. At the beginning, he was a really shy kid, but it was that really that, that big smile that you really kind of you know, just wanted to find out more about him. Mike's father was separated from his mother, Margaret, and was absent in the lives of both Mike and his brother, Randy. You know, Frank made things really easy. Like, you know, it didn't seem like he was out doing this to, to try and better himself. It almost seemed like it was almost like a natural progression, a natural fit. Three years later, it would be Frank who needed Mike's support. And it was in the early 90s, my, my dad passed away in, in October, my wife passed away in, 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 in later in, 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 that, in, that year, in that year. And um, so it was, it was difficult. Um, and there's, uh, you know, there's some things that really kind of, kind of saved me in, in, during that time period. And, and Mike Labinjo, um, you know, was a big part of that. Yeah, if you don't believe in fate, um, that was certainly fate for me. As a teenager, Mike became a standout football player at St. Mike's High School in Toronto. But when his grades suffered, Frank enforced some tough love. Mike had to give up football until he improved his grades, which he did, and number two returned to the football field. You know, I don't want to let, let Frank down. You know, I, I see this guy who's dedicating his time and putting all this effort into me, and it must be for a reason. And, you know, I just totally bought into everything that he said, and, you know, um, it was the best thing for me. When Mike earned some attention from U.S. college scouts, Frank made and sent out over 50 copies of this recruitment tape. And when Mike played for the Michigan State Spartans, Frank missed only five games in five years. I mean, whether it was him waking up at five in the morning to, to drive down to come see my game and then turning around and driving back, he'd, he'd always find a way to get there. And when Mike was down, Frank was there to pick him up. Number 42's chances of being selected in the 2004 NFL Draft took a blow when he wasn't invited to any of the pro combines, in spite of leading the Spartans in sacks in his senior year. Here, this is what we're going to do. We're going to rent a house down in Arizona. We're going to get someone to look after the, the nutritional. And uh, so there's a strength coach and a speed coach. We put together a diet, we put together a plan, and he tested off the charts. Frank has many proud football memories of Mike coming out of the tunnel in his first game at Michigan State, signing as an undrafted free agent with the Philadelphia Eagles in 2004, making the practice roster and starting on special teams that same year, and then the ultimate. The Philadelphia Eagles, they're headed to the Super Bowl. After the game, Mike got me out of the field. Everybody kind of left and you know, I went to Mike, I said, Mike, you know, you know, we're gonna have a shower, let's go to dinner and like we always do. And he looked at me, he says, you know what? Why don't you and I just stand on the field, stay on the field a little while longer? There's a lot of guys that are in the NFL that never get an opportunity to, to play in the Super Bowl. And you know, being a Canadian kid and being that it was my first year, it was just made that extra uh, special. A great moment, but for Frank, there was an even greater one. My main objective for him was to get a university education. And for when he walked down that hallway uh, and was presented with that degree in economics from Michigan State, um, that was really, that was fulfilled for me. Frank left Canada in 2005. That same year, Mike was released from the Eagles, eventually returning to Canada to sign with the Calgary Stampeders in 2007. I watch the games, you know, I, you know, when they're live and I get a little tired for the next day, but that's okay. And uh, Mike and I still have our conversations at the end of every game. And even though I'm many miles away, um, certainly not uh, many miles away in terms of spirit. If Frank was to walk in this room, how would you introduce him to me or anyone else here? 
you know, I could say he's my best friend. Um, you know, I could say he's like, he's like a dad to me, close family friend, but I guess if I had to pick one of those names I gave him, it'd probably be like my best friend. Rain or shine, I always know that I can count on Frank in the good times and the bad times.